Hey everyone, welcome back to Contemplative Knitting. I'm Julie Sakura, and I want to thank all of you for some of the comments and for subscribing and I hope that you'll find this next episode enjoyable. The last time we were together I was talking about my love affair with Lopi and since then I've noticed some of my favorite podcasters have started knitting with Lopi. Ray and Kevin from Needles at the Ready and Petra from Knit Inc. So I hope you're having the same kind of experience I had. When we last left me, I was trying to decide if I was going to use the yarn that I bought in Iceland on our trip at a natural um, dyeing place where they use plants. Uh, the name of that place is Hespa, H-E-S-P-A. And it was this wonderful studio in Iceland. I wandered in there and I was really attracted to um, some purple yarn that was kind of multicolored, which I just dropped. Let me grab it. Here it is. And um, I bought it, but I wasn't sure if I was going to have enough uh, to make a sweater with it. They, she only had like five skeins. And in addition, I found um, this, and these have all been dyed with plants. Uh, this was a similar weight to the purple. Um, which is kind of like a let lopy weight and then this was more of a lace weight so I kind of got this hodgepodge and I wasn't quite sure what to do with it and um, of course I'm working on this Isla cardigan from a book called magpies home buddies and nomads I'm working on this cardigan and I noticed in the book that there was this kind of a cool pullover, um, kind of a no sleeve pullover with the hood. And I thought, hmm, I wonder if that would work. And it's made out of Icelandic yarn. So I swatched like a good person and I got the gauge. Wow. So I started knitting that uh, pullover, the Reykjavik pullover, and um, I ended up doing it. I did not do the hood, which I wanted to do, but I don't know if you noticed, but as, uh, as I was coming up to here, I'm running out of purple yarn. And I'm like, uh, what am I going to do? Because I needed two strands of the purple yarn to get the gauge. So I had some let lopi left over from my cardigan. So I took the black and I paired it with the purple. And you can see kind of right here where that happens. Now, had I known, I, I mean, I've been playing yarn chicken, so I don't know what's really going to happen. And I'm thinking, had I to do it over again, I probably would have started the black maybe a little lower. So this whole yoke was the black and purple. But it's a nice marl and it faded. I actually did sort of marl it. But I'm super pleased with this. I've gotten a lot of good comments on it. And it's it's warm. It's like wearing a vest. And it is a vest, essentially. And it's super quick to knit because you do it in the round. And, you know, there's no sleeves. No, well, If you get the gauge, you're good to go. And I got a nice little, I use this as a, a coaster. So anyway, I am now sort of taking a break from my lopi love and kind of going back to some other knitting. I had great plans for myself. Um, we've spent the last six weeks traveling around in our RV. My husband and I are retired with our Afghan hound who hopefully at some point in the podcast will be making an appearance. She's more like a cat than a dog. Um, kind of a crazy, crazy animal. So she's 70 pounds. So the three of us traveled around the RV and I had wonderful thoughts about getting some, some works in progress done because I have quite a few of those. But what I ended up doing was we went to see our, our son who lives in Charleston and we went to the Charleston food and wine festival, which was amazing. I mean, essentially you pay one price and it's all you can eat and there's booths and booths of food and drink and wine and beer and it's just amazing. So when I travel I like to go to yarn stores and um, so they live on the Isle of Palms and we were going downtown Charleston so I thought okay I'll Google yarn stores in Charleston and I couldn't find any. Sometimes if you Google yarn or knitting they don't really come up 
But I did find one in Mount Pleasant, which is right near the Isle of Palms where they live. And I went there and it's called the Wild and Woolly in Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. They have a beautiful selection of fabric, just class A gorgeous fabric. If you're a quilter, you will love what they have. Um, they have a small selection of yarn, but it's really cool yarn. And they have a dyer, uh, the Fiber Studio at Yarns to Die For, D-Y-E. And it's Fiber, F-I-B-R-E, the Fiber Studio at Yarns to Die For, does specific dyeing just for the Wild and Woolly Yarn Store in Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. So they had a skein of yarn there called Ocean and it was it it's gorgeous it was beautiful and it it reminded me of the ocean they also had a hand dyed skein called Low Country um which is a, like Low Country land or and it and it had all the colors of the Low Country and I was really tempted but I'm trying to control myself so I picked Ocean and it was one skein of yarn and I thought well what am I going to do with it so I decided I would do um, a shawl by Hohi Locatelli, and um, I picked out her pattern Storm because the, the blue of the ocean sort of reminded me of uh, the Storm shawl that she has, which she's made out of yarn called Storm, and um, I couldn't resist. I, I actually had to wind the yarn because I didn't have my ball winder and I just started to knit and um, I loved I you know I'm knitting in the RV I have plenty of time to knit so it's cool because it's got some short row shaping which creates the crescent so you can see this large amount of garter stitch over here and it gets thinner on the other side there's drop stitches there's some eyelet lace and then there's a pico edging to finish off with. So um, I didn't get it done in time to wear in Florida because uh, I, I bought a blue dress down there and I thought well this will be nice you know in the air conditioning but um, it went really quickly. Um, I, I love this. I have done her lightweight hipster shawl which I thought I had to show but I'm not sure what I did with that. Anyway um, Super fun to knit. The uh, the yarn is a 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, and it's around 400 uh, yards. So, um, I did modify the pattern a little bit. I instead of wrapping things, what she said, I kind of made them a little shorter. Um, so, I mean, you know, depending on how much yarn you have with her patterns, it's super easy to say, okay. I'm going to do the edging now or I'm going to bind off now. And um, that's kind of, you know, I'm never quite sure. And you want to have, especially if you're going to do a Pico bind off, which takes a, a good amount of yarn, you definitely want to have enough to do that. So it's soft and it's squishy. And I think it'll be great for some uh, nice soft thing to throw around my shoulders, um, you know, when you head into the air conditioning. And it's a great souvenir from the trip. So last time I did talk about some works in progress that I was hoping to finish on this trip, but uh, I got distracted once again. So um, I was knitting on that shawl. We went to Florida and then we kind of came up the panhandle and we went to see uh, our son in Alabama and their four kids. And then we journeyed up to Missouri where I have a son and in St. Louis and with one granddaughter who's about to turn five. And I was getting excited because I had finished the shawl and now I wanted to work on the Miserina sweater, which I wanted to start. And I think I talked about that last time. I have this wonderful uh, yarn I bought at Rhinebeck and um, couldn't, couldn't wait to start it. But I had packed a needle case with all of the stuff I was supposedly going to need on this trip and I didn't have the right size needles. And it's like, oh, 
because I have loads of needles and I just wanted to start it. And I'm thinking, you know, I had some other whips, but I wasn't as into those other whips. And so, of course, I decide, well, I'll look up a yarn shop around St. Louis, Missouri. Um, actually, we were in St. Peter's. So I Google again, and unfortunately, some of the local yarn stores had closed. But I did find one, and um, I went there, and I took along my... My granddaughter, she was just kind of spending the day with me. She's super bright, uh, cute, of course. She's my granddaughter. Very, very cute. So I take her in the yarn store, and she goes immediately toward this hand-dyed yarn that was to dye for. And again, I controlled myself. She goes, oh, Grandma, isn't this really pretty? I'm like, yeah, it's really pretty. Put it back. So we put it back. And then she's kind of wandering around the store, and I'm looking at needles. And she comes back to me, and she goes, Grandma can you knit me a dress? Like, a dress? <laughs> sure. I mean, she's very petite. I don't um, like to knit for children. Babies, yeah, but children, they're rough on things and handcrafted stuff can get sort of poked and prodded and the woven ends come out and, you know, it can be, it can be a tough thing to do. Um, a lot of time and, you know, they get them dirty and so I wasn't super enthusiastic, but she was, and it's like, how can you refuse these big, big, beautiful eyes? So I, so she said, um, I really want a dress, and I found some yarn, and it's purple and pink, and those are my favorite colors. So I'm like, okay, purple and pink. Um, I said, look, we've got to pick a pattern because yarn comes in different thicknesses, and we've got to find the right yarn to fit the pattern. So I got on Ravelry on my phone and we found a pattern. It's the maxi top slash dress by Elena Nodel, N-O-D-E-L. And it's maxi top slash dress. So you can make a tunic top or a dress. And it was a free pattern. Um, and it was worsted weight or DK. And so I'm saying these words, knowing full well that a five-year-old isn't going to have a clue. And she goes, well, Grandma, let's go see if it's, if it's DK. Okay. So she goes running toward this purple and pink yarn. And she goes, Grandma, it's DK, it's DK. I'm thinking, how does she know if it's DK or not? And then she shows me the ball band. It's got the words DK on it. So this is this is the yarn that she picked. It's um I have one without the ball band. It's got purple and pink and it's hard to tell, but there's a little bit of green. Um and I thought, oh, all right. So I do drive the RV. It's 30 feet long and we were towing a Jeep, but there was a lot of wind and our seat is broken, so I got to be like this, and I'm trying to keep it on the road. So I, I only drive for like an hour or two hours at a time, and my husband did the majority of the driving. So I got to do the majority of the knitting. And so on the way back from St. Louis to New York to Rochester, I knit her a dress. There it is. She's, um, I knit the size four and five, which is got a 22 to 24 inch chest. And kind of like what I'm wearing, you, uh, you cast on a lot of, uh, you cast on for this ribbing. And then there's this eyelet increase right here. And that kind of creates the yoke and then you just sort of cast off for these sleeves or not sleeves just sort of armholes and the kind of little sleeves and then you keep increasing and increasing and increasing for the time that you make the skirt and the hem is just kind of a, a garter stitch in the round so you knit a round pearl around and yeah but i thought the self striping made a really cute little dress it's um got a real Easter quality to it. And you can see the pink and the, and the little green. It's, it's just super cute. So I'm going to send her her Easter dress. Yeah. 
So that kind of took away a little bit of my time from working on my works in progress I was trying to get done. So two finished objects and um, two works in progress. So I got this bag at that cool wild and woolly store in Mount Pleasant. This is Charleston. Isn't that cool? Yeah, and it's a nice size bag. I love it. Um, opens up. It's got like the handle. So in here is um, one of my diamond duality socks, the one that I kind of messed up the, the needle size. But what I bought myself was some nine inch circular needles um, and I did the first sock on the double pointed and I, I love the nine inch circular needles. I got them in all the sizes. Um, these are the 12 stitch repeat for the diamond duality socks. I'm doing, um, the, a small size at 60, 60 stitches. So it's a, it's a little, I have to stretch it out a little bit. It, I, I think if you were doing a larger, like 72 stitches, it would fit a little better. But when you're doing color work and you don't have to fool around with double pointed needles and because you've got the 12 stitch repeat and you can't have the little markers on where it's going to fall off the double pointed needles. So it makes it a lot easier um, to do the color work. But because of the dress and the shawl, uh, I didn't get very far. But I got far enough to know it's way easier on the 9-inch circular needles, at least for me. So I've got to come up with a plan um, that's going to keep me motivated because I definitely have second sock syndrome. And although I think the weather's going to warm up and I'm not really going to have an opportunity to wear the socks, I'm kidding myself because... It's April 10th, and um, April and May can be very cold in upstate New York, like they are today. So I definitely need to kind of keep that going. The other thing I did was I did work on this Isla Card Cardigan, which is on the cover of Magpie Home Buddies and Nomads. It's this yellow sweater. So you can see the back kind of comes up over the shoulder and these are the fronts. So there's kind of a tab from the back and this is the front part. So I did, I started the front before I left and um, I did complete the two fronts. So I am coming along. This is one of them. I do kind of wonder this is going to fit obviously not blocked and this is the other one and I knit them I put a marker on one so yeah I got a little glitch here I'm hoping it's going to block out I've got a little pull in the yarn here but I think it'll block out anyway um I did put a marker so I knew which one was left and which one was right because the shaping is different um you know you got your armhole so this is this one and then this is this one so yeah I've got the front done I have the back done and it's super soft and really nice and um, I think it's gonna fit cardigans are not my friend I can do a pullover like no tomorrow but and this is a really fine fine gauge it's beautiful. It's soft. It's got a little bit of a halo. So we'll see um, how that progresses. Um, I really wanted to start the sleeves and I had finished the dress and so I, the sleeves have to be done on double pointed needles. And I was going to start those on the trip, but um, I didn't know what size needles. Because I had copied the pattern from the book so I could carry it around and not have to have the whole book, but I didn't copy the page that had the needle sizes on it, so I didn't know what the ribbing was done. So I got home and I discovered it's size 5 and size 6, so 
I've got five size five double pointed needles and I've got an inch on the ribbing of the first sleeve. So I'm really excited to get that done. It's been a long time coming, but um, I don't have, I'm not stuck on Sleeve Island. I am stuck with second sock syndrome. So that's sort of my quick little update. Uh, hopefully next time I see you, it will be warmer. I won't be wearing lopey yarn anymore. Uh, it'll be past Easter because uh, today is Palm Sunday and we're heading into Holy Week. And um, I will have, hopefully, maybe this will be done. We live in hope. And I'm going to keep working on the socks and I should hopefully be a good way on my Miserina sweater, which I'm really looking forward to. Anyway, thanks for joining me again today. I hope all of you people who have started knitting your lovely lopey sweaters are enjoying that yarny goodness and if you want to see more from me happy to have you please subscribe and um, i will see you when i see you thanks